Hey everyone, Thomas Joseph here. Now nothing says St. Patrick's Day like corned beef and cabbage, but have you ever made it before from scratch? Well, it's really easy to do. It takes a few special ingredients and a little bit of time, and you will have the perfect recipe for St. Patrick's Day. So to get started, I'm going to create the brine in which the corned beef will sit. So I have two quarts of water coming to a boil here, and now I'm going to grind the spices, which give that unique flavor to corned beef. So I have one cinnamon stick here in a mortar and pestle, one teaspoon of whole peppercorns, a teaspoon of yellow mustard seeds, and one teaspoon of whole coriander. And then, of course, bay leaves for flavor. So I have four bay leaves here, right in, and grind this mixture up slightly. And what it does is it helps to bruise the spices, allowing more infusion of the flavor in the brining liquid. So that looks pretty good to me and to the two quarts of water that's almost up to a boil, add one cup of kosher salt, a half a cup of granulated sugar, eight whole cloves, and now here's a secret ingredient, one tablespoon of pink salt. And this is not the, the Himalayan pink sea salt. This is actually a very special salt that has about 6% sodium nitrate. The rest of it is regular salt. And what this does is it adds that wonderful red color to corned beef. If you couldn't find this, you can omit it from the recipe, but your corned beef won't have that signature red color. So whisk this together until it dissolves. Add your wonderful aromatic spices here. Whisk this together until all of the salt and the sugar is completely dissolved. So our brine has cooled completely. And now for the brisket itself. This is a five pound piece of brisket. This is the flat cut. And now transfer this into a large resealable bag. If you can't find one of these, you can use a tub like this or a roasting pan to brine your brisket. Pour in the cooled brine. You might be asking, how did corned beef get its name? There's no corn involved in making this recipe. Well, the term comes from the Anglo-Saxon times before refrigeration was really available, where to preserve a lot of meat, they would cure the meat in large corns of salt, which are crystals of salt. So that's where the name comes from. I'm going to seal up my bag here, and this goes into your refrigerator now for two weeks. So we have a brisket here. This has been corning for two weeks. Taking it out of the brine, rinse it, and give it a good pat dry. This goes into a nice large pot. To this, add one carrot, some aromatics here. One carrot, one stalk of celery, you can cut it into pieces, and one white onion. Right in with the brisket, and now Simple enough, all you need is a little bit of water to cover by two inches. That looks good there. Now bring this up to a boil, reduce it to a simmer. You're gonna cover the pot and cook this for three to three and a half hours until the brisket is very, very tender. I'll show you what that looks like. So it's been three hours and the corned beef is beautifully tender. I've removed it from the pot and now to keep it warm, tent with tin foil. Put this off to the side before we carve it up. And while this rests, I'm going to add my vegetables to the broth. Now strain the broth of any um, impurities. You can skim off any fat that might be coming to the top. Leave a little bit because fat is flavor. Add a pound of baby carrots, new potatoes, and baby turnips that have been peeled as well. Now you want to bring this up to a simmer and simmer the vegetables for about 30 minutes. You wanna make sure they're tender, so 20 to 30 minutes. Now, of course, corned beef and cabbage would be nothing without the cabbage, so I have one medium head of cabbage here. I'm just trimming away the, the exterior leaves, and I'm going to cut this into eighths, leaving the core, because otherwise, your cabbage would separate into pieces. So I will cut each half into quarters, and these go right in with the other vegetables. So this will simmer for about 30 minutes, and once the vegetables are tender, I'm ready to carve up the brisket. So our brisket has been resting. The first thing you have to do is remove a lot of this fat that's on the top of the corned beef. 
So we're trimming the fat off now because we really want all of that fat in during cooking because it really keeps the meat nice and moist and it keeps the flavor in. So trim off as much of the fat as you can. So this looks trimmed and now for the slicing, you wanna make sure that you give about a quarter of an inch slice. And remember guys, that this pink, wonderful pink color, that's from the salt. This is not undercooked, this is completely cooked, but look at the beautiful color you get if you use that pink salt. So now transfer your meat to the platter. And I promise you that once you try homemade corned beef, you will never go back to that commercial stuff. Enjoy this recipe, everyone.